If you watched my earlier video on fractions, decimals, and percents, you'll remember that I gave you some tips on how to translate a word problem into an equation that you can use to solve for percents or solve for various numbers for percents, fractions, decimals. And what I want to do in this video is talk about that more, but expand it even further into translating word problems into equations in general. It may not have anything to do with percents necessarily. Of course, percents could be involved. But we can use these techniques to translate really any kind of word problem into an equation, at least, well, not, I shouldn't say any kind, but certain kinds of word problems for the SAT into equations. So what I want to do in this video is just give you kind of a, a, a dictionary or a list of terms that when you see them in a problem, you can translate them into words. Most of them are pretty self-evident and straightforward. There are a few that can be tricky, and there are a few that are really important. Like, for instance, in the present video, I talked about of. I'll talk about that again in a little bit. But let's start with some basics. I'm taking some of these examples, by the way, from the SAT Blue Book. So if you go to pages 248 and on, you'll see where I'm getting these from. The first is you might see something like this. 3 times the quantity 4x plus 6. Well, let's just translate this. This would be 3 times, that means multiply, the quantity 4x plus 6. That means this thing as a whole. So this will just be 3 times 4x plus 6 in parentheses. OK, no problem. How about this? A number y decreased by 60. You might expect that's just going to be a number y decreased by 60. So subtract 60 off of it. No problems, right? However, let's do this. x, or well, actually this, 5 less than k. Uh, what would this translate into? You might think, oh, it's just k minus 5. Well, wait a minute. Or actually, sorry, you might say, <laughs> that's actually right. You might say, oh, it's just 5 minus k, 5 less than k, 5 minus k, right? Well, no, you've got to be very careful, because what is it actually saying? It's saying that your number is 5 less than k. So it's actually going to be k less 5, so k minus 5. If this is confusing, just put in a number, and it'll become a little more clear. So let's try 5 less than 10. Well, what's 5 less than 10? 5 less than 10 is 5, right? That's just the way it is. It's not 15, it's 5. So that's why you're going to do 10 minus 5. Um, so as you can see, we get the 10 minus 5 or the k minus 5. So this one doesn't come up too often, but it is one of those tricky ones that I mentioned earlier uh, in the video. Same thing as this, x less than uh, y. What would that be? Well, it's x less than y, so it'll just be y minus x, because you're taking off that x off of the y. It's x less than that y. So these are probably the trickiest ones in the translation, I would say. So be, if you ever see anything like that, anything to do with the subtraction, be very careful. Because with addition, it doesn't really matter. If it's x more than y, it's, it could be x plus y, y plus x, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're commutative. But uh, with subtraction, it does matter, because y minus x does not equal necessarily x minus y. So therefore, uh, we got to be very careful with the order we put those in. Some more. Um, 20 divided by n. I mean, this is pretty clear. 20 divided by n. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible. I'm just trying to go through this quickly. It's just 20 divided by n, right? Nothing crazy. 20 divided into a number y. Well, that's a little bit different, right? It's 20 divided into y. So this would just be y over 20. OK, some other things that might come up more generally. This is coming from page 252 in the blue book. I mentioned this in the percents video, and it also applies here. If you have something like is, is equal to, was, you know, has, it's an equal sign, right? So 4 is 2 less than whatever. There you go. It's going to be an equal sign. Um, What's next? Uh, if you have something like more than, greater than, sum of, anything to do with addition or adding, it's going to be addition. And as I said earlier, you don't have to worry so much about order here because it is a commutative operation. You can flip it around where x plus y equals y plus x. So there's really no worries about that. Uh, less than, difference, younger than, fewer than, like any of these kinds of things indicating less than or subtraction, um, you're going to have minuses. And again, as I mentioned above, just be careful about the order you put that in. So I mentioned this in the percent video. This is a very critical one, and this will help you on a lot of problems. When you see of, in general, it's going to be multiplication. So if you have something like 
twenty percent of the dogs are black. Well, it's just going to be 0.2 for 20% times the dogs. We'll just say D. And that's how you translate this part of the words. And it's this of is the key. Multiply is of. Of is multiply. Remember that, and it will really help you. Not only for percents, but also for fractions, problems, and for equations. Finally, if you see something like for or per, so, you know, miles, 60 miles per hour, as you can see by my notation here, it's just divided by. Uh, so, uh, you're going to have something like 60 miles per hour. It'll be 60 miles per hour or per one hour. You can put in a one there if you wanted to to make it easier. Um, if you had like, as they have in this book here, two bleeps per revolution. It would be two bleeps divided by one revolution, right, or per rev, like that. Uh, finally, if you have something like four, sometimes you'll have this as a with ratios. Uh, which I talk about in an earlier video, ratio problems. Um, John ate two slices for my for each of my three. I ate. That's a little awkward, but you get the idea. Um, so the ratio here would be two to three, or two over three in this case, if you wanted to do the dividing way. Um, and then you could you know set up a proportion. So John and B like that, something like that. Uh, if you, this is confusing, you can go back to the uh, proportions and ratios video where I talk about this a lot more. And that's pretty much it for translation. So we're going to see a lot more examples of actually how to work with this on problems later, so I'm not going to give actual examples now. But if you memorize this and if you work with this and this becomes second nature to you, it'll just help you so much on many different parts of the SAT math section.